One of the most commonly agreed upon complaints for many video games is the time limit. Why should games like XCOM 2 force you to complete missions in an arbitrary amount of turns if that is not your playstyle? While there are many arguments for and against time limits in these single player adventures, there is a game I have been obsessing over ever since a young little game analyst played the first installment back on the Nintendo GameCube, that series being the too oftenly neglected Pikmin. I want to go through each of the three Pikmin games and discuss the pros and cons to each of their different approaches to time limits to see what we can learn from this masterful series. So we start of course at the beginning with Pikmin 1. After crash landing on an unknown planet, Olimar finds a ship in tatters and needs to go collect his 30 missing ship components in 30 days before his life support system fails and he dies from inhaling the planet's toxic air. His only source of support are creatures he finds and dubs Pikmin, which act as a personal army of sorts. Story-wise, the timeline adds a sense of danger that the other two games lack. Olimar being alone and isolated, surrounded by beasts that can easily kill him with a hard time limit, creates this wonderfully dreadful atmosphere as Olimar's fate looms over the horizon with each setback you face. And this premise is the perfect setup I believe for the gameplay aspect of things. It's easy to understand that to keep on track, players need to collect one ship part a day, which is roughly 15 minutes of in-game time. It's easy to understand and know if you are ahead of schedule or need to pick up the pace a bit. And one clever thing the game does is not make every ship part required without outright telling you this information. Five of the 30 ship parts are just quality of life aspects of the ship that are not needed to finish the game, but they are there for those that want to get the true ending. The best thing this system does is forces players to explore and take risks. Knowing that you need an average of one part a day makes it so players cannot afford to comfortably advance at their own pace. It leads players in a high-risk, high-reward scenario that lead to interesting gameplay instances that would be lost if players could take their time to plan out every detail flawlessly. It makes more memorable situations and encounters in which you feel you just barely survived, which are great for overall excitement and stories to tell friends. The weakness here is the aforementioned feeling that players don't get to play the way they want. Many people might feel stressed with a looming time limit that prevents them from enjoying the game in the first place. This might not be a bad thing, some games aren't meant to appeal to a certain demographic, but knowing the consequences of this design is important to consider if you want your game to have broad appeal. Next, we have my favorite, and the black sheep of the family, Pikmin 2. And I say black sheep, as there are many questionable changes that feel out of place compared to the other two entries. Once again, Olimar crashes onto the planet, but this time he has his co-worker Louie. Instead though, they are not on a hard time limit. They are on the planet to find treasure and to make money for their home planet. The game is still structured into 15 minute days, but you can play for an unlimited number of days as your life support is not failing this time around. So to put it simply, I think the pros and cons of this approach are similar to the first games, just reversed. The pros of having no hard time limit is that the game is more approachable, but the downside is that it no longer has the same story weight nor does it lead to fun gameplay scenarios. I'm sure Nintendo wanted it to be more approachable than the first game, but it felt like the pendulum swung too far in the other direction when designing Pikmin 2. The time limit at this point just feels like an annoyance that occurs every 15 minutes instead of a main feature, which at that point why even have the day cycles if you can just re-enter the level and quickly pick up where you were the previous day. Personally, it feels more like a carryover from Pikmin 1 than a conscious design decision. And this leads to universally the most controversial aspect of Pikmin 2, the caves. The caves are notorious for a number of reasons, one of which is that time does not pass while in the caves, meaning that the day cycles are meaningless, leading to my question of why even have a day cycle in the first place if the majority of the game doesn't even use it. The lack of a time limit means I can just sit there and wait for the Pikmin to evolve naturally in the ground, which sure is wasting my own time, but it's more efficient gameplay wise. This shouldn't be allowable, as it's not how the designers intended the game to be played, and a better design would have prevented, or at least discouraged me, from these unfun game practices. There are a number of other things I could talk about regarding caves, such as their linear nature, how you can bring out more Pikmin, and how disjointed they feel, but this video is about time limits, so I'll leave it at that. Hopefully not the last, and hopefully not least, Pikmin 3 comes in and once again tweaks the time limit formula around. However, Pikmin 3 seems to have found a nice middle ground somewhere in between its predecessors. In this third entry, you are limited by a number of days once again. In this case, it is your food supply that you consume at the end of each day. However, this number is malleable and can be increased by collecting fruit during the day, meaning that as long as you're making progress, you'll be able to continue going. Now this soft time limit approach has plenty of advantages. It combines the dread-inducing aspect of Pikmin 1 while also having some of the approachability of Pikmin 2. 
It means that players are still forced to be proactive and make slightly risky behavior, but aren't punished nearly as badly for a botched battle. Fruit can be harvested fairly quickly, allowing you to build your reserves to a point where it's not a big deal to take a day off to resupply your army. Though there are some downsides. Perhaps the most concerning is that it punishes inexperienced players and too heavily rewards experienced ones. And by this I mean the following. Suppose Pikmin 3 is one of the first games you've played. It's not a particularly difficult game, but starting out with the 3 day juice limit and seeing it quickly go down could mean that it, for some it's a struggle to keep up. An inexperienced player might find it difficult to keep their juice supply topped off and be under constant stress, which is fine if that's the general design, but compare it to an experienced player that has perfected all of the past Pikmin games. That player might stroll in, collect 4 or 5 fruit a day, and end up with 70 days worth of juice, and not feel any pressure whatsoever. Ideally, you would want these feelings reversed. The inexperienced player should have the more pressure-free experience to ease them into the harder aspects of the game, while the experienced player would desire the fun pressure that a good challenge offers them. How to circumvent this issue that doesn't involve difficulty in settings is a tricky conundrum. But I imagine it might be to have the early section of the game where the only playable character's elf require a third of the juice the full three-person squad needs. This would make the early portion of the game where the inexperienced person is learning a bit more forgiving, while making the latter portion just a tad bit more difficult. It also makes logical sense, as opposed to the current game, where no matter how many people are on your ship, you consume one bottle of juice a day. Though, admittedly, that does make planning out the days a lot easier. As mentioned, Pikmin 3 is a bit on the easy side compared to the other two, so the previous point is still probably an extreme example, but it's still a design choice to consider. So why talk about time limits or turn timers in video games? Well, as mentioned, it's a good way for developers to push players into playing specific ways. If given the option, there's no doubt in my mind that players would max out their Pikmin count before every encounter if they could, and if the game was difficult enough. It stops players from taking the fun out of the game, and leads to different gameplay scenarios that normally wouldn't be achieved if the player had the ability to crawl at their own snail-like pace. However, many games like DMC5 make players behave in a certain way not by limiting them, but by rewarding them for good behavior, so that might have to be a video for another time. Ultimately, Pikmin 1 wouldn't have that same oppressive atmosphere if the day counter wasn't looming over you, and I don't think a reward approach would reach that same level of charm. So as controversial and hated as many term limits are, I appreciate most of them for what they accomplish in terms of tone, gameplay, and difficulty. Do you have any good or bad examples of time limits done right in video games? Let me know below in the comments. Unfortunately, the sun is setting and the ball are approaching, so until the dawn, Godspeed.